morning, guys. Today we're going to start our unit on probabilities. So first thing we need to understand about probabilities is how to count things. Uh, because in, we know that in general probability is number of successful, out, number of possible successful outcomes divided by number of possible outcomes, whether it be successful or non-successful. Um, so we first need to know how to count up all those possible outcomes. And that's what we're going to focus on today with these counting methods. Now the first counting method, what all of them are really based on, is this fundamental counting principle. Fundamental counting principle says if there are m ways to make the first selection and n ways to make the second selection, there are m times n ways to make the two selections. Now you've played around with this before uh, in prior classes or prior courses. So um, just real, real rough. If I had um, one, I oh, won't do. We'll do two. Say I had two of one item and two of another item. Let's see, we'll just call this item, um, I don't know, shoes. So, shoes one and shoes two. Okay, so say I have two different pair of shoes and I want to wear different socks also. So say I have two different pair of shoes and two different pair of socks. How many ways can I match up those shoes and those socks? Well, shoes one can go to sock one or sock two. Shoe one or shoe two could go to sock one or with sock two. So the total is one, two, three, four. So there's four different ways I could get one pair of shoes and one pair of socks together. Now, because that gets really hairy when you start throwing in large values or more than just two events or two uh, sets of items. We use this idea right here of just multiplying the number of choices for the first one and the number of choices for the second selection. So I could have saved myself a lot of time in drawing by saying, well, there are two sets of shoes times two sets of socks. And I want one of each. Two times two is four. So that's where we get this same idea here. If you can choose one of three meats and one of two cheeses for a sandwich, how many different sandwiches are possible? Well, meat one could go to cheese one, cheese two. Meat two could go with cheese one, cheese two. And meat three could go with cheese one or cheese two. So that's a total of one, two, three, four, five, six possible sandwiches. Or we could have said that our, if I'm an eraser, we could have said that we have How many meats times how many cheeses? Well, how many meats are there? Three. How many cheeses are there? Two. So we get a total of six combinations of one meat and one cheese. Pretty straightforward. All right, so let's look at this next one. If Mr. Paris owns four shirts, three pair of pants, and six ties, I am assuming he doesn't match like most days. Um, how many ways can, how many outfits are possible? How many ways can I get one pair of pants, one shirt, and one top? Well, as a fundamental counting principle says, I just take the number of shirts times the number of ties times the number of pants. So shirts, four shirts, uh, three pants, six ties, and we get 24 times 3, which is 72 different outfits that are possible. And so that's fundamental canon principle. And uh, that, that's how you really figure out anything. Just figure out how many possible objects you have in your first scenario, how many possible objects are in the second scenario, and you're just going to multiply those together. Now, how we create each of those sets of uh, subsets of objects gets a little more involved. As we start putting restrictions on, once I pick one type of meat, I can't use that meat again. Or if I, uh, you know, once I pick one tie, I can't put that tie with a different outfit. T those type of things uh, are what we're going to lead into uh, in the next few minutes um, with our permutations and things of that nature. So give me a second, I'll get my information about permutations up here. So here we have a little twist on that uh, counting principle <laughs> idea that we just talked about. It's called a permutation. A permutation uh, is an arrangement of items in a specific order. So when we're calculating permutations, uh, we need to note that if the order of the items changes, then we have a new countable object. 
uh, where before it didn't matter if I picked my shirt, which shirt I picked first, uh, which tie I picked first, things of that nature. Uh, in this one, if we change up the order in which things happen, we've got a new object, a new item that we need to count. Um, also, items in a permutation cannot repeat. So, uh, in the last one, uh, we were only picking one item, so obviously it wouldn't repeat. But if I had, uh, if I was picking two ties and that type of thing, uh, then that would get into a permutation because I obviously can't wear the same tie, the same tie twice at the same time. If that makes any sense, uh, you'll start to see that here in a second. Uh, right here, I have some notation things on permutation. Uh, we could write it, and the N and the R should make sense here in a second. For, well, let's look at the example first, and we'll come back to uh, that notation. Uh, the example says, how many different nine-person batting orders are possible from a 12-man baseball team? So this is one where we know that I can't repeat objects. I can't have somebody bat first and bat seventh. One person gets used, he doesn't get used again. And the order changes. This is how many different batting orders. So if we're doing something that's uh, position-specific, order-specific, or uh, each position has a title. So uh, say we were talking about wanting to get um, class president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, those type of thing. I could have the same group of four people, but if I gave them a different title, that's changing up the order. That's getting a new countable group, a new office every time we do that. If I was the same four people for each of those offices, um, I'm getting a different cabinet depending on who's holding which position within that. So uh, position matters, uh, order matters, then we're talking about a permutation. So uh, let's look at what's going on here. Now, the way I like to work permutation is what we're getting ready to do, but I'll show you this formula here in a second. Some people like that. All right, so let's just think counting principle. I think of it as not a 12-man team and a nine-person bag, so I have nine slots to fill. Okay, so in the first slot, how many possible people could fit in that first batting order? Well, there are 12 people that could bat first. Well, once I've assigned that first person, how many people can uh, bat for the second spot? Well, it's not 12 anymore because whoever batted first can't bat second also. He can't bat again. So now we only have 11 people to be able to bat. Third position, we now only have 10 people and then nine, and then eight, and then seven, and then six, and then five, and then four. So counting principle says once I know how many people or how many objects, there, items there are in each slot, we just multiply each of those uh, amounts together. So when I do 12 times 11 times 10 and so on, I should get 79,833,600. That's all the different ways I can take these 12 baseball players and rearrange them into batting orders of nine. Well, all the different ways I can take 12 items and put them into different orders of nine items. And that's what this uh, notation right here says. The permutation of 12 items or n items taken r at a time. So for the problem we're doing, uh, it would be the permutation of 12 items taken nine at a time. So all the different orders of nine from those 12. So just some different notations. We could have N as this little superscript and R as a subscript. Uh, we can have both N and R as subscripts. This is the way we will write it. Uh, but you may see it like this in some text. And the formula for it is N, N exclamation point over N minus R exclamation point. Exclamation point in math means factorial. And it just means start at that number and multiply all the way down until you get to one. So um, if I say I had five factorial, be, 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So you just decrease 1 each time. Now, the reason I like this better than the formula, because if we looked at this formula, n factorial over n minus r factorial, this out of the way, and then the formula in this case, well, in this case, n is the total number of items we have to choose from, which is 12 factorial. Well, how do we get 12 factorial? 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And we're going to put that over 12 minus 9 factorial. Over 12 minus 9, which is 3. A little better marker there. So over 3 factorial, which is 3 times 2 times 1. Well, this is all multiplication and division, so we can cancel out common factors. Three cancels, two cancels, one cancels. So what are we left with? 
12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4. Same thing we have here. 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4. So for permutations, I don't use the formula. We want to know it, be familiar with it, because we'll use it in other things, uh, at least the notation to be able to create some other formulas. But I don't ever actually do the formula when I'm doing permutations. Now, combinations I will. Uh, that's what's coming up, uh, because it's, the formula works out better than the other things we're doing. Uh, we're doing it by this type of technique. But for permutations, I just treat it like a counting principle problem. Um, and just how many items do I have for each possible slot and then just multiply them out because you're going to have to do the same thing at some point in uh, one point in. All right, so that's permutations. Remember, very important, specific order. So if we're talking about, again, changing up the order or if we talk about items within the group or positions within the group being specific, uh, first, second, third place in a race, uh, batting orders, um, positions with you know, titles within a group. So if the group, the object, has each item being position specific or each item has a specific title to it, uh, then we are talking about a permutation as long as the items in the permutation cannot repeat. Remember, if the items can repeat, then we don't worry about any of this other stuff. It's just a counting principle. How many items for the first choice, for the second, for the third, and so on, and we multiply all those together. Uh, next, we're going to talk about combinations, which is where, again, the items cannot repeat, but the order really doesn't matter um, as far as whether or not we have a countable group or not. So give me a second, I'll get combination information up here for you. So with combinations, um, as you can see, it's a group of items in no specific order. If the order of the items change, we have the same object. Uh, so just think of this as groups, and then we'll say that a lot of times. This many items grouped, uh, this many at a time. So. The order within the subgroup doesn't matter, it's still the same group, which is different from a permutation, because the permutation says if I change the order within the subgroup, I'm getting a new countable object. Uh, so, but again, uh, items in a combination also cannot repeat. One person can't hold two spots within the same group, so that would not be um, a combination if that was occurring. Now, notation-wise, we'll get all this stuff, and the N and the R are going to mean the same thing. The N is how many items we have to choose from. The R is going to be how big our subgroup is. Our, yeah, our subgroup is. Um, so very similar um, notation, C and then N of R, or of N R. Uh, N is a superscript, R is a subscript, N and R as subscripts. N and R looking kind of like a fraction, but there's no bar in the middle. And then there's our formula, N factorial over N minus R factorial times R factorial, which should look very similar to what we just did with the permutation. And what we're actually doing is, if a permutation is all the way I can rearrange items into small subgroups, a combination just divides out all those repeat groups. So if I was doing groups of five, uh, permutation says I've got however many items there are to choose from. I've got, I'm putting them into groups of five. Well, there's my one, two, three, four, five. Well, if I change that order up again and again and again and again, every time I rearrange those five, I get a new group. Well, combination says let's divide out all the times we rearranged and go back and figure out how many were in that original group. And that's what this R factorial is. When we divide out all the different times we've rearranged, that's how many combinations we have. And again, combination can be a very confusing word for students because it doesn't really fit with our, what we think of as combinations. Uh, if I said, you know, how many combinations of toppings on a pizza could I get? Well, yeah, that fits because the order I put them on the pizza is not going to change what's on the pizza. But if I said, what's the combination to this lock? That's one because that's actually a permutation because a combination says we don't care what order the numbers are. I don't care what order that I put those numbers in on that lock. It should work if it's a combination. What we should say is, what's the or what's permutation of this? Because if I changed up that order, it's not going to work because it's order specific. Uh, so that's kind of what we need to think of with combinations and permutations. Combinations, we don't care about the order of the items within the subgroup. Permutations, we do care about the order of the items within the subgroup. So if we have this example here, Mr. Paris has six students in his study group. How many two-person groups are possible? Now, do I care about who was picked first for the group, who was picked second for the group? No, I'm just saying I have six people. I want to know all the different ways I can put them into pairs, all the different groups of two I can get from that. So the way we would do that is we'd recognize that's a combination, and we would just go over here to our formula. Now, there's two ways you can do this one. Um, 
we can just plug in the numbers into the formula. So if I wanted, in this case, uh, six items taken into groups of two. So six items into groups of two. We just go six factorial over two factorial uh, times six minus two factorial. Getting ahead of myself. And you just do the math. Six times five times four times three times two times one over two factorial two times one over, what's that, four factorial? So four times three times two times one. Well, when you do this, a bunch of stuff will cancel out. So you're left with six times five, which is 30, over two is 15. So there are 15 different groups of two I can get from those six students. Now, another way you could do this is by recognizing this is just our NPR formula, our permutation formula. So I could just say, Calculate your permutations and divide it by r factorial. Why is that better? Well, what were the permutations for 6 and 2? Permutations would be 6 items for the first person. So that leaves me 5 choices for the second person. So 6 times 5, just like we talked about uh, a minute ago. Uh, and then r factorial, we would actually do the 2 factorial. So it's just leaving out the, all this canceling stuff out, similar to how on the permutation formula, I told you, I just like to write out the slots and fill in the possible options. Well, there were two slots in this one, and the first one had six people that possible, and the second one had five people possible. So when I do six times five over two factorial, I'll get 30 over two times one, which is 15. So an alternate way to do it, either way will get there uh, for you, but um, that, again, it's your choice what you're comfortable with. So that's combinations, permutations, and counting principles. So just real quick, let's go through this one more time. If, the, if I can repeat items, then none of this other stuff matters. It's a counting principle. Number of choices for my first item, number of choices for my second, number of choices for the third, fourth, and then multiply all those numbers together. If I cannot repeat, I've got to decide. Does order matter? If it does, it's a permutation. Does order not matter? If it doesn't, then it's a combination. Once I know which of the three things I'm dealing with, it's just a matter of which numbers am I multiplying together. Okay, that's it for counting methods, and I will see you in class tomorrow, guys.